Good morning and aloha everybody. Welcome to another episode of Something to Do and we're playing Mario Kart 8 again. This time with items. I'm gonna be a complete hypocrite because I said I didn't want items in the first video. But then uh, I was quickly uh, given advice from uh, my mother and also my own thoughts in the back of my brain that uh, maybe people are gonna get bored if there are no items being used in these kind of videos and that the items will actually help me focus on the game more because since they weren't there I was more focused on uh, myself rather than the game. So with the items the game itself will shut me the heck up and keep me focused. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a 12 race, uh, cup. So, yeah, just like the other one. Uh, the other one was like, uh, like 14 races, but I had to cut two of the races out because they were accidentally the same dang tracks immediately do the old tactic of hold the friggin' banana. I upped my volume a little bit on my microphone because last time you could barely make out what I was saying. Like, in comparison to a regular YouTube video that has their uh, volume on medium, like, I thought I had mine on, like, the highest setting, but it was making my voice super duper duper quiet to where even like when you put it on like full 100% volume you could barely hear it so uh it's it's in the orange right now again much like the other video which surprisingly the uh microphone quality on that one did really good like i counted a, a total of uh, three times where the microphone uh actually glitched out. It actually sounded relatively uh, decent. I thought for like a good five minutes during one of the races that it was making my voice super duper wobbly, but turns out that was just me not picking up on my own voice because I was friggin' tired. Ah, uh, shoot. I downloaded a DS emulator to uh, a recent phone that I was uh, given this week because my old phone uh, was acting up really friggin' bad. AT&T hated the fact that I did not buy one of their products. Like, they came over to our house and they offered my family, like, a bundle of iPhones and when uh, they brought me up and they, you know, they asked if I was interested in getting an iPhone, uh, I promptly told them, uh, no and I wanted to keep my Android, and no joke, the guy at the door scoffed at us. He gave us the most disgusted look, gave us an attitude, and just walked angrily to his car and drove away. So uh, that gave me a clue that uh, we have not good relations with AT&T. So like, We've had that for a good uh, two to maybe three years now. And it wasn't until like almost two months ago where uh, we were trying to fix the, uh, the phone bill. And uh, it, the, like, the latest one had to have us uh, reaffirm our phones into the phone plan. And, uh, turns out, uh, like, the phone plan didn't recognize my Android. And, uh, well, that's when everything went downhill. As soon as we reaffirmed my Android into the AT&T phone plan, that's, uh, when my phone started acting up real friggin' bad. Like, it, it had no previous issues whatsoever before the reaffirmation. So it was just, <laughs> it was just going downhill and uh, we knew it was AT&T screwing with my phone. It wasn't the fact that the phone was getting old. AT&T 
purposefully put a kill switch in the phone. And, uh, yeah, my brother told me this. Like, certain companies basically have a kill switch in all of the, their devices. Like, after a uh, certain time, because, uh, you know, they want you to buy the latest phone, they'll just, you know, update your phone a, a bunch. And what those updates do is uh, damage the internal uh, wiring and stuff like that in your phone so that it seems like it's getting old when really it's not. Your phone is destroying itself. And uh, certain computers do this too. Uh, my old laptop uh, did that where just all of the updates just made it worse and worse and worse. And the reason why every single one of those updates happened was uh, not because the computer needed it. It's like, like they made certain functions on the computer and phone stop so that when uh, you put on the update, it just turns those things that were already on to begin with on again at the cost of damaging the internal schematics and all that. So that happened with my Android, except it happened like super duper aggressively. Like the battery took the worst out of it. Like I could not take it with me for more than an hour before my phone like friggin' ended itself super violently. And it got so bad to the point where it basically became stationary. I could not uh, take it with me outside of the house or else it would die. So uh, we got a new phone with a new plan. We took AT&T off of the phone plan because we don't want to deal with them again. I don't want to say the name of the company that we're with right now because I know that I think other companies keep track of uh, their competitors. So I'm not going to say the company that we're currently with. Just know that it is way better than what AT&T was doing with us. But uh, the first thing that I did with the new phone was put Mario Kart DS on there. And that leads us to where we are now. When uh, the 3, 2, 1 happens, I accidentally... Uh, hit the uh, accelerate button way too early. See, that was the most long-winded explanation to uh, a tiny joke that wasn't even funny. And uh, I, I forgot where I was going with that sentence now. How? I don't know if it's like the game itself that is uh, doing it or that my controller is just incredibly desynced. But uh, sometimes when I'm trying to drift, it doesn't pick it up. Or like when I'm trying to drift in one direction, it accidentally sends me in the other. So I, I don't know how to explain that, but it, it, uh, it just throws me the heck off sometimes. Like it doesn't happen most of the time. But every once in a while, especially if I get slightly aggressive, it just messes me the heck up. I'm being ultra safe with my recording right now. Every time I open up OBS, I go to the settings and I, uh, I turn on and turn off NVIDIA because, you know, I'm, I'm well aware that it's NVIDIA that's screwing with OBS right now. So now that I'm paranoid about the quality of my recordings, I have to turn everything back on and off again just to make sure that it works proper. That toad had no face. Much like that one. Toad, you need to see a doc. Many toads actually need to see a doctor. That one just looks offensive. You know what, uh, let's just ignore the toads, because they're really scary. Whatever thing they got, I, I don't want to learn about it. See, toads? Toads, why aren't you like the toads in the posters? 
they're not trying to hurt anybody. I'm pretty sure you're gonna make like multiple viewers angry. I am actually really happy that there's uh, been no blue shells as of yet. Usually in a uh, normal race like a 50cc, it's uh, usually uh, a common thing for there to be at least one blue shell being thrown, especially on like the final lap, but we haven't had that thus far. Now let's see if that jinx carries over into the next race, shall we? That's not going to sound broken in the recording, but I am the one making vocal errors. I forgot to drink. Don't drink water during a recording, though. That stuff will mess you up. Usually on a normal day, they would say, drink plenty of water, it clears your throat. But I'm a voice actor, and that's actually pretty bad for me, because I actually uh, need to keep my mouth moist for certain voices, especially if I'm doing a raspy voice uh, like Eggman. That requires all of the moisture in my mouth to be used all at once, and drinking water does the opposite. It actually dries up my throat, and clearing it out uh, gets rid of all of the, that tight space that I use in my lungs to make that raspy noise, and it just messes me up for a good couple of hours. Same thing with orange juice and orange sodas. I don't know why it's specifically orange, but uh, those things just uh, screw me up during a recording. That's why I drink things uh, like Mountain Dew and Chalky Milk. See, that is a threat. But uh, thankfully, since the blooper only covers up, I hey, there's one. There's my jinx. How you doing, buddy? Glad to see ya. One of the rare occasions where you're happy a blue shell appeared because it was starting to get real friggin' boring. Now, are we gonna keep up that momentum? The lightning answered me yes. Also, I made a mistake. I wanted to put this at 100. 50 cc because that's the most intense, but I accidentally set it to a hundred Either way it is still pretty quick though. Now let's wait for a red shell Let's see if someone can do it While also racking up the most monies Mario Motors remember when he had a pizzeria? And I don't mean like the actual restaurant Mario's Pizzeria, although that place shut down years ago. There was a poster in uh, one of the uh, old towns that uh, my grandparents lived in, where there was just a giant uh, flat poster over the uh, bridge that was over a train. And it had a picture of Super Mario in a kitchen getup. He had the big old chef's hat and everything. I've tried to look for that image ever since and it's nowhere to be found. If I had the money, I would commission it and then I would pretend that it was the real thing. But since it's not, we just have to settle with a remaster. And also I'm poor. We got Rainbow Road early. It would have been really cool if they got the Rainbow Road from uh, the uh, Game Boy Advance game Super Circuit, because I grew up on that one. And uh, the song from uh, Super Circuit was just really friggin' catchy. Like, every other Rainbow Road has this beautiful majestic uh, kind of anthem and melody to all of them. The one from Super Circuit is just a bop all the way. It's like, it's like, it's happy to have you there and it's breaking out all the beers and it wants you to go on the dance floor. We just never had a song like that ever since. It was a remix that I found on uh, YouTube 
that basically uh, did its own uh, version of what it would sound like in Mario Kart 8, or at least Mario Kart Wii, I might be misremembering. But uh, either way, it sounded dang good. I know I'm not the only one thinking this right now, but isn't Yoshi driving a cart the same as a horse driving a van? Or a horse riding a chariot? The most offsetting Mario Kart track in all of Mario Kart Dumb. It's not really that much offsetting, but uh, I've been binging a lot of uh, Mario Kart 8 videos because uh, playing the game has gotten me in the mood to watch channels talk about it. And from what I've seen, most YouTubers uh, always describe this track as like very off-putting or very non-Mario. Okay, that was a good hit. But uh, I don't... I don't think it's off-putting. I think it's uh, fine. It works. It's fun. And I'm sure if you know how to mod it, you can make it look like a Splatoon map. Because uh, even if it doesn't say Mario, it certainly says Nintendo. Hello. About time a red shell was thrown. <laughs> Gave me a reason to actually protect myself. I'm thinking at one point I should do like a marathon of uh, all the tracks in this game, the Wii U version specifically, because that's something we used to do as kids where we like uh, went into the versus mode, set all tracks, and we just uh, <laughs> we just raced through all of them on uh, 150 cc with the computers on hard mode. I'm not going to set it on hard mode because then I'd get depressed, much like when that happened. When we set it to that, I uh, ultimately came in uh, seventh place, like by the, well, by the near end of it because uh, a little, little kid me got a little too upset and shut his DS off like a petty little brat and uh, Ever since then, I did apologize to my brother oh, for it, and uh, he, he basically took the apology. He, I, I like when he visited uh, here last time a few months ago. I properly said that I was sorry for doing that, and uh, he basically said, "Okay, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, I forgive you. I I already forgave you. It's not a big deal anymore." But like you know, you know, you, you just gotta, you, you just gotta do that though. You gotta apologize for the dumb thing that you did as a stupid little kid. Hello, my friend. Can I grab the monies before I reach the finish line? The dog has woken up. Okay, I'm I'm leaving this race with only half a wallet. Typically, in every Mario Kart race, in every cup, I try to end every race with 10 coins. Because I know, like, the coins go into unlocking as much in the game as possible. So that's always my personal achievement. But, ooh, it hurts. It really hurts <laughs> when you finish a race with less than 10. You know, the typical joke here would be saying, hey, we're in Toy Story, and you wouldn't be wrong. <clears throat> that was a terrible impression. Fuffy. I got up for a moment, and I accidentally stepped on the friggin' wire of the controller. Okay, yep, yeah, mistake number one has happened. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, that Mario Kart poster. Kinda looks like it would be in the same place where the uh, Woody and Buzz Lightyear thing would be. Cause you know, strange things happened in that movie. No, I'm not apologizing for that one. I liked that joke. Came out of it with a full wallet. Let's go. Yeah, I went back and I checked this out on the 3DS and there's practically no differences between this and the 3DS version. That. 
That says a lot for the 3DS. I think the only difference between the two would be that this is uh, slightly bigger than it is because all Mario Kart 8 tracks are freaking huge, all things considered. I'm not gonna go too deep into it. Like many, many uh, Mario Kart fans already know this. I'm not gonna just tell you what you already know. Just know that the booster pass really highlighted that fact. Giant Toad Nightmares for Days. Anybody seen Anim Music? I have no joke. I'm just asking, did you see it? Joke's on you! <laughs> I started off this recording full energy, but now I'm relatively getting tired now. Yeah! Yeah, I get the best type of protection. I'm ready for the blue shell unless somebody just uh, throws a lightning bolt or a red shell my way. Then in case uh, the sword's gonna be completely wasted. So uh, let's, let's actually pray for the blue shell. We've been rooting for it so far. Come over here, blue shell, we believe in you. Come over, Blue Shell, we believe in you, buddy. Come over, Blue Shell, come on over. We want you to come over here and play. God dang it. I am humoring myself. Every time I bring up a famous YouTuber, it sounds like I'm saying it, like, spitefully or sarcastically when I'm not. I'm a huge fan of those channels. It's just that anything that I want to talk about, they've already covered and in better detail. And they're also way more educated about that kind of stuff than me. So when I bring them up, it's more or less an advertisement for them. Boy, they really simplified this track. Like, in the uh, Nintendo 64 version, it was very easy to get yourself lost, and that would result in you just going in last place at least, like, like two out of three times. Here, they just <laughs> made it easy for you uh, not to get lost. They made it way more linear this time around. They still kept all the branching pathways for it to uh, play off like a maze with, with the illusion that you might, might get lost, but no, no you won't, it's Chuck E. Cheese, you won't get lost in the friggin' pipe maze. The big egg gives birth to like 40 Yoshis a month. That way the population can rise every month without the risk of depopulation. Thank god population and depopulation are two completely different words, otherwise I would have sounded completely redundant. Fun fact, did you know there's at least four redundancies in every airplane? Eat your peanut butter jelly, cause it's about that time. Oh, this is new. Bowser's Castle's the finale. Okay. Let's go, I'm into that. I thought the game was going to do a self-fixer-upper and uh, pre-make uh, Rainbow Road as the uh, final race because I made the mistake of having Rainbow Road be the first track of my first Mario Kart 8 video and that made everything else slightly less interesting. I put that on the refrigerator. Do not make Rainbow Road your first freaking race. I think I basically got everything off my plate that I wanted to do with the items. And I think for uh, all continuous uh, future videos, I'm gonna keep them on. Take that loot from a week ago. Your Noah item clause is no more. I'm just using other words because the, the actual words that I mean to use are lost on me. In the heat of battle, one forgets the smart words. And sometimes someone forgets the little words. So your brain scrambles 
for something that is at least passable. I'm just going to assume that that uh, ship is stationary, probably just sitting there and the fans on for show. I deflect my own criticisms. That's about it for this playthrough. I hope you enjoyed. Have a safe week and a fantastic month. This was a very casual playthrough. Hey, new vehicle. I gotta check that out just real quick. And, uh, you know what? Have a super duper fantastic super fragile calolistic whatever. <laughs> super califragilistic. Expiali dosis year, buddy. What we got? I don't want this. 